Okay, so we'll be, taking, we'll be starting. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone that is here today. Thank you for joining us in this uh, very remarkable meeting today. We look forward to this day and it's there at last. Today we shall be looking at uh, something very critical and that is smart IoT and its applications in the oil and gas sector. For us to achieve this, uh, we have a very experienced professional with us today. A man uh, whose sandals are not fit to unlay is very, very experienced as a pace setter, a trailblazer, you know, a pathfinder as far as smart IoT is concerned in Nigeria and the world of Africa. So today, you will join me as we give welcome our facilitator. But before we do that, I'm going to play a video that's going to share, tell, tell us more about him. So please, ladies and gentlemen, get ready as we play the profile of this remarkable professional. We'll be back after the video. He is a natural, experienced, and passionate entrepreneur. He is an experienced corporate executive with a flair and passion for visualizing business opportunities, developing businesses, and nurturing them to success. He prefers technology-based businesses, but can and does participate in other areas of commerce and industry. He is a skilled and experienced problem solver, able to solve all kinds of problems, from solving profitability issues to optimizing building designs to meet specific needs, to creating solutions to unemployment issues in the communities or countries. Being the founder and also the major contributor to the funding and building of the companies in his group has been very rewarding indeed, especially seeing how well they have developed and prospered. In the group, we have Trantorit Infrastructure Services Limited, Swiftic Limited Communications, Trantor International Limited, Construction and Supplies, Lamango Entertainment Limited, Hospitality. We always strive to exceed the expectations of all our clients and customers, and have successfully achieved this 99% of the time. IoT Africa Networks Limited. Who we are? IoT Africa Networks Limited is a company within the Trantor Group and owned by Trantorit Infrastructure Services Limited, Trantorit. IoT Africa Networks Limited has been the exclusive Sigfox operator in Nigeria since 2019. IoT Africa is currently deploying the Low Power White Area Network, LPWAN, which will provide a national infrastructure to facilitate the growth and penetration of IoT and industrial IoT in Nigeria. Our mission, our mission is to enable and power the Internet of Things in Africa through the provision of affordable and reliable IoT network connectivity and solutions, and to empower homes and industries to have full visibility and control of their assets. Our vision, a world where all assets are visible and well-managed through the use of innovative, cutting-edge IoT technology, provided by IoT Africa Networks. All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, so you can see that we have a colossus of knowledge with us today. So please, I would like to hand over to Mr. Larry Ayola now for, your, for this, uh, for him to continue with the meeting. Mr. Larry Ayola, please. Thank you very much, Michael, uh, for all the compliments. Um, indeed, it's been, it's been a long journey. I um, just want to confirm, can you hear me well? Sorry, you're muted. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So it's a pleasure to be on, on this um, uh, segment of your show. Uh, and the, indeed, it's um, also a pleasure to still be part of the tech industry in Nigeria. Um, it has been a, a long journey, um, over 30 years now. And uh, I'm very happy to say that the, the tech industry is doing extremely well. 
So um, I think what I'm going to do um, is to is to start the presentation because I think during the presentation, um, the presentation is going to take two styles. Uh, one, one of the styles is going to be a very formal um, PowerPoint presentation. And in between, we'll be talking about uh, different things. I want to introduce, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to introduce uh, a business case um, for, for smart, smart oil and gas. Um, the technology is there. Um, but when I was thinking about things this morning, I thought um, the audience may not be all technical people or all engineers. So we're going to look at it from, from a broader perspective today. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's um, what we want to establish is that uh, smart oil and gas or digital oil fields or the use of IoT in, in, the, in the industrial sector is certainly something that has to be adopted if we're going to remain competitive in the international community. So um, let me go ahead and, and try uh, to share uh, my screen. Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for your patience. Um, today, we're going to talk about smart IoT solutions for the oil and gas industry. Uh, my name is Larry, and I'm the Executive Chairman of IoT Africa Networks. Um, uh, next slide, please. So, um, IoT Africa Networks was established in 2019, and um, what we did was to establish a, a firm relationship with Sigfox. Uh, Sigfox is one of the largest low-power wider network companies in the world, and Sigfox is um, um, has representation all over the all over the world. Um, IoT Africa is the exclusive operator of Sigfox in Nigeria. We're deploying the Sigfox low-power wide area network throughout Nigeria and Lagos, Abuja, River State, and now smart cities and smart city enabled as a result of this. What does it mean to be smart? Um, we hear of the word smart all the time. Um, we know what it means when it, when it um, is referring to an individual. But in this case, we're talking about making equipment smart. We're talking about making machines smart. We're talking about making your environment smart. A formal um, definition of it is being smart means getting the best out of your resources, minimizing your waste, your worries and anxieties, maximizing your peace of mind, maximizing your profits and your comfort, and optimizing your operations. And certainly you can you would, um, agree that the doing all of this in the oil and gas industry, given the importance of oil and gas in the Nigerian economy is key. So what does it mean to minimize and what does it mean to maximize? As IoT becomes more and more the norm, where we are growing comfortable with the idea of automated industries, smart homes, smart cars, smart cities, integrated environments that can receive information in real time, learn from it and act based on that information to eliminate the frustration and save us time, energy and money. Our network and footprint is growing at an exponential rate, um, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. Uh, so far, we have, um, Sigfox has representation in 70 countries around the world. It's probably more like 75 now, um, currently covering over a billion people and having about 15.4 million connected devices, currently spanning over 5 million kilometers square. So the network is growing. The availability of low power wide area networks across the entire world is growing. The adoption rates are growing. People are starting to understand and realize that the benefits of um, a low power wide area network is are, are immense. So we've got you covered. Sigfox is already available in 70 countries and aims to cover 100% of the globe within the next few years. The rate at which things are going, um, we're going to achieve that in, in a very short time. Now, um, later on, we'll talk about some of the applications, but here 
what are the unique selling points of Sigfox? And indeed, what are the unique selling points of low power wide area network connectivity to enable the internet of things in, in Nigeria? The unique selling points are that it is cost effective. There is a global reach and a single network. What it means essentially is that if you have a tracker, for example, on any piece of equipment and that equipment travels across the Nigerian border to another country or to another zone, that tracker is, 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 is the tracking is continuous. You don't have to sign a, a different contract with different uh, people with different countries and different service providers. The most, one of the most important things about low power wide area network connectivity is indeed that the power consumption is low. The power consumption of the devices are low, which means we have very long battery life. With the GSM systems, you'll very often have a battery life of days, weeks, maybe months if you're lucky. With the Sigfox Low Power Wide Area Network um, system, you can have battery lives going as high as 17 years, um, but typically between five and 10 years. But we do have, for example, smart meters that have a battery life of about 17 years. It's a wide ecosystem. The advantage of Sigfox is that it is extremely difficult to jam. Jamming GSM devices is very easy. These devices are available on Amazon and you can jam um, GSM devices, but you can't jam a Sigfox device for certain technical reasons. Um, very briefly, um, that the fact that the Sigfox signals are sent three times at three different frequencies um, and, and received by multiple towers, uh, multiple base stations. So it's extremely difficult to jam a Sigfox signal un unless of course you have um, a military-grade jamming device. The, the, the consumption of power is predictable, which means once you have a device and you understand the power consumption of that device and you put a particular type of battery in that device, you can act and you decide on how many messages that device is going to send per day, you can predict exactly how long the battery will, life, the, the battery will last. IoT solutions, because with the low power wide area network um, infrastructure, uh, the devices are wireless. And because they're wireless and battery operated, they are very easy to deploy. We don't need any external power source to power um, an, a Sigfox IoT device. We have indoor penetration. Indoor penetration is high because of the, the frequencies that the low power wide area network operates on. Security is also very high. It is difficult to hack because the Sigfox devices do not have IP addresses. So you need an IP address to identify where a, 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 a device is and then hack it. But if you don't know where it is, you can't hack it. If you can't find it on the internet, you can't hack it. So therefore, it is almost impossible to hack a Sigfox um, device. And you can, uh, we can get, give you an, 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 a global SLA. Okay. I'll try to go through that very quickly so we, don't, we, we, can, we can move it into the very interesting part of this presentation. Oil and gas and digital oil fields. What is a digital oil field? A digital oil field is a concept that combines business processes um, and management with digital technologies to automate workflows for maximizing productivity, reducing costs, and minimizing the overall risks associated with oil and gas operations. Certainly, um, information and data is important. Now, prior to digital oil fields, what had to happen was individuals had to be sent out to the field to read the meters, um, to, um, to know what was going on at the wellhead, what was going on at different parts of the oil field, um, the flare stack, the wellheads, the, the chemical tanks, um, the re reservoir tanks, and so on and so forth. But today, that's different. Today, devices can be deployed into the, into the oil and gas ecosystem, into the oil fields, and into the flow stations and production centers and so on. And we can collect that data, transmit it over 
the transmit it wirelessly through our low power wide area network and we can make we can ensure that we the information is received safely and securely and that information can now be analyzed and turned into useful information and that information now can be used to adjust the settings, adjust the chokes on the, on the wellheads, adjust certain various things to ensure that productivity is maximized, to ensure that we, 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 um, the assets are optimized. So we should be on slide number eight. We should be on slide number eight. Now moving to slide number nine. So, in the digital oil fields, uh, and I might um, just add that we are the exclusive distributors of Oleum Tech. And um, Oleum Tech is one of the largest producers of wireless IoT devices for use in the oil and gas industry. So, um, on slide, slide number nine, um, we have the, the picture of the digital oil fields, and we, we can see in slide number nine that, um, Josephine, so slide number nine, please, um, which is the oleum tech picture showing the production tanks, the tank level sensors, the chemical tanks. That's right. So this is an overview of what is obtainable and what is possible in an oil field. In an, in, an, in an oil and gas um, ecosystem. All these things that you can see on the picture are what you might find in an oil field. You have the production tanks, and with the production tanks, you can measure the level, you can, you, you can, you can measure how much water and how much oil you have. You can, you have the, we have the tank level sensors, um, which can be inserted, and we have a unique method of measuring these using carbon fiber, um, using carbon fiber strips to ensure that there's that these sensors do not get stuck. So you can determine the volume of water and the volume of oil or the volume of a chemical in a tank. Um, we can measure various things on the on the flare stack, the 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 the, the, um, the temperature, whether the thermocouple is working or not. Um, we can we can. Um, collect data from the separators to know, to measure the flow, um, pressure, temperature, and also uh, provide a high level alarm. Um, well heads can be, can be thoroughly measured. We can measure the pressures of the outer, outer tubing, the inner tubing. Um, we can measure the temperature and so on. So in short, all this data and all the data possible that, is, that can possibly be collected from the oil fields can be collected by us with using our oleum tech sensors. This information can be transmitted as far as 25 kilometers um, to the base stations, and the base stations will transmit the information uh, through the internet um, to the platforms, and, and the platforms will receive the data analytics platforms, and they will receive they will receive the data and um, analyze it, insert the data into the models and provide information that would guide the oil company on what adjustments to make, what has occurred, um, what the status is, is there any danger about, is there any danger that needs to be addressed, um, and so on and so forth. Collecting the data, analyzing it, and using it can save many millions of dollars. Transa IT is the, um, is, 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 the, is the parent company of IoT Africa. IoT Africa is a special purpose vehicle. Um, it was established uh, specifically to address the, uh, to, to provide IoT solutions and IoT services and low power wide area network connectivity to enable the Internet of Things to operate in Nigeria. Um, Trans IT uh, is the OEM Tech exclusive partner and, um, and distributor 
of IoT, uh, Olium Tech IoT devices in Nigeria. Um, we have various um, uh, partners. Uh, this is really just a, a very small collection of them in this particular slide. Um, from Olium Tech to Digital Animal, you know, obviously with the Sigfox exclusive distributor. And um, so basically there are, there are a wide range of IoT solutions that we can provide. From, 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 not, from uh, devices that are specifically designed to be intrinsically safe, which means they can operate in explosive environments, in very sensitive environments, at a, in, in environments where the temperatures are extreme and the conditions are harsh. Um, so uh, we have over about 40 different OEMs that we partner with. Um, so there's virtually no solution no requirement that we cannot address. So, um, moving moving straight to uh, the slide on um, upstream. Um, within the oil and gas industry, we have the upstream sector, we have the midstream, and we have the downstream. In Nigeria, we tend to talk mainly about the upstream and the downstream. The midstream is a bit of a gray area, but we'll cover as, as much of it as we can today. Now, um, in the upstream sector, we know that we're looking at um, collecting data from the, from the, from the wellheads, with, from the chemical tanks, from the separators, uh, from the production tanks, from the vehicles that move um, petroleum products uh, up and down, um, from the oil wells, from the flare stacks, uh, and generally from the environment, and making sure that the, the, the compressors are working well. Um, and, uh, we can move on to the next slide. Within the midstream sector, we have, you know, it, sometimes one would, one would uh, define the midstream sector as being the refineries, um, the tank farms, uh, and, um, you know, the logistics and so on. But one of the major, major problems that's, that's I mean, uh, uh, requirements within the oil and gas industry is to always understand how much product have you produced, how much product are you do you have in storage, and when that product is moved from storage to the transportation sector to move the product to the end users, to the customers and the end users, um, we need to know how much product, uh, we need to have that data. Having that data helps to understand of course, to be able to account for the assets um, and understand what, what resources you have available. Um, if all the tanks are full, then obviously you can't continue to pump. If the, if the, if, if, if the pipes, um, so as in, in, in short, um, information on every part of the production cycle or the, um, has to be understood. Every uh, data on, on every part of the supply chain has to be understood. And this data can be collected from the field and transmitted wirelessly to ensure that um, timely information is received, information is received timely, and timely decisions can be made to avert disasters and to optimize um, the overall uh, um, production and uh, operations. In the downstream, we have systems um, whereby we can ensure that even down to the last liter, every 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 liter of petroleum products, whether it's petrol, diesel, or kerosene, or gas, can be measured, and all leakages will be identified and reported. Um, real time. So we don't have to wait for the station manager to get his dipstick out and insert that dipstick into the tank uh, and read off the, the level of the tank manually and um, manually put that information into the system. Uh, and then that's just, that information may be uh, will get to head office in a day or maybe even a week. Um, so now, real-time information can be provided 
from every single gas station in the country and um, transmitted to the people who are supposed to receive that information, the owners of the gas stations and maybe even the regulators, so that every, every station that has petroleum products can be seen real time. Um, so hoarding and speculation and so on can be can be eradicated. The diversion of products can be can be eliminated um, because even the oil tankers that deliver uh, the petrol tankers um, that deliver uh, products to the gas stations can be tracked as they're offloading the tracking. We, we can determine how many liters of petrol and diesel and kerosene were offloaded at which station. And as it's being offloaded, we can measure the level of the tanks in at the station itself and know um, how much uh, product was actually offloaded at the station. And as the product is utilized from the underground tanks, we would know immediately how much of that is being utilized. So, um, excuse me. So, so IoT. Is, is, is certainly something that we cannot do without. Um, if we intend to run an efficient oil and gas industry from the upstream, midstream to downstream, IoT certainly must be adopted. So, um, on the screen we have um, oil and gas condition monitoring and different devices. What you can see at the bottom of the screen is um, a typical uh, oleum tech transmitter. Um, this transmitter is, is unique, it's powerful, it's efficient. Um, the typical battery life uh, of an oleum tech transmitter is between eight to 10 years. So once you put it into the field, it doesn't require any maintenance for eight to 10 years. Next slide, please. Obviously, um, I forgot to mention from the previous slide that um, these devices are ATEX certified and indeed have over five types of certifications because they're, they're designed to work all over the world. And of course, different countries use or, or um, require different types, of different certifications. Olium Tech has them all. So they certainly are um, uh, uh, appropriate for the Nigerian environment based on the certifications that the NNPC and the regulators have, in, have, um, have specified. And of course, the international oil companies that are operating in Nigeria um, have accepted the oleum tech devices uh, and um, including the NNPC and NPDC. So um, these devices are suitable for the Nigerian oil and gas industry. Um, one of the things that is um, that IoT, I believe, um, resolves that is extremely important, especially to human beings, is the fact that we can monitor the environment. We can monitor the environment in the oil and gas um, fields. We can monitor the environment in the in the operation centers. We can monitor the environment even with even in the offices to make sure that the impact on the environment by the oil and gas industry can be measured in real time and obviously action can be taken thereafter once we identify that the impact is negative and severe then uh, action can be taken to resolve it without the real-time monitoring of the environment um, pollution could be ongoing and, hum, hum, and the human population could be very uh, dramatically affected in a negative way um, before action is taken. So real-time monitoring um, that's enabled by, by um, IoT Africa and its partners, Sigfox and Olium Tech and Connected Finland and other um, uh, uh, um, partners um, is, is very important. Um, Real-time monitoring of the environment is very important, and that is something, obviously, that we are looking forward to um, seeing an expansion of the application of these solutions in the ecosystem.
Next slide, please. Obviously, one of the major um, uh, um, data data on flow on flow is extremely important. It 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 certainly helps um, to understand what is what is being produced, what is being transported, um, and uh, at what rate. And obviously, within that, you will be measuring also the pressure uh, and so on and so forth. In short. Um, I, I wanted to, a, a, very, a very brief um, um, case study. Uh, there was a situation where an oil company was convinced uh, that they, they, they needed to drill new wells in order to increase their production. And um, the plans were set in motion. But it was discovered, utilizing... Um, IoT by by placing IoT devices in that system, it was discovered that the problem was not that they needed more oil wells to produce the oil. It was that the existing oil wells were not able to deliver. In other words, the pipelines that were collecting the oil was were insufficient to collect the amount of oil that was being produced by the by the well um, and by measuring the pressure and the temperature and the flow and understanding what was happening in that particular field they were able to save millions of dollars because all they had to do was to expand the pipe network um, to collect the gas from the oil wells and not have to dig very expensive oil wells and all the maintenance that comes with that one of the areas that um, IoT um, excels in is collecting information from gas tanks. Now, eventually in Nigeria, we're going to see um, a massive expansion of the use of LPG, liquid petroleum gas. And um, today we have situations where, um, well, gas, the, the, uh, the adoption of gas in Nigeria um, is really very, very low compared to the population. But eventually we will have no choice because uh, we only have so many trees to cut down to make firewood, um, to produce firewood, and eventually we are going to have to focus on gas. When that happens, and has started to happen, then the impact is going to be extremely important to monitor the volume of gas in the tanks, like the one that you can see in, in, the, in the picture on the screen. Um, and this is already in place all over Europe and the United States. So we are, we are partnered with the most cost-effective, we have partnered with the most cost-effective um, and reliable uh, producers of devices that measure the, the volume of gas in the tanks. Um, and we are obviously, we have started to deploy them in Nigeria. Our partners in this particular case is IUT. IUT is very, very strong in LPG, um, in gas monitoring, not just LPG, but also natural gas. Nigeria has a huge um, reservoir, a huge, a huge reserve of, of natural gas. And eventually we're going to see the adoption of natural gas becoming common, especially in the area of providing gas for gas turbines um, as an alternative source of, of energy um, for, uh, 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 as an alternative fuel um, in the production of electricity. Please go on. For safety and security, um, we obviously would need to monitor that um, in, the, in the production centers and also in the administrative centers. Um, smoke detection, um, heat detection, environmental control, all these things are very, very important. Um, we are able to provide uh, smart devices that can measure the, the like a, um, monitor the environment and report back on what is happening. And whenever there's a, 
um, the smoke even down to the beginning of a fire, the smoldering that takes place when an electrical wire has started to burn, this can be picked up by our devices and the um, appropriate authorities can be alerted and action can be taken before a major disaster occurs. Next slide, please. Um, manual monitoring is, is, is quite important because um, if, when, you, when you have underground pipes and underground cables, um, you want to be sure um, in, in, during the installation of pipes and cables underground, manholes are created in for maintenance purposes. These manholes are a point of entry for people that are interested in, in, in sabotaging or stealing whatever might be below the ground level. So we have devices that can sit on the manholes and whenever a manhole is removed, information can be passed on to the appropriate authorities for them to take action. So this is a very important um, security uh, system that, um, that we can um, install to ensure that expensive things and critical infrastructure like um, fiber optic cables are, are sorted out, are, are, are protected. Please go on. Next slide, please. Um, the perimeter of any installation is important. And sometimes the feeling is that you have to have ex very expensive fencing in order to protect your environment. But regardless of how expensive the fencing is, it can be scaled, it can be climbed, it can be broken, it can be penetrated. Um, and, the, and then you're, 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 there's a breach of security. But what we have are devices that can sit on the fence and alert you when an intrusion is about to take place. And what you can see here is a chain link fence. And we have devices that can, and chain link fence are one of the cheap types of fencing that you can have um, in, in the market, that you can find in the market today. And whenever somebody wants to climb or cut a chain link fence, fence there's a vibration. And we have devices that will measure the vibration and transmit information um, to the authorities to let them know that you let them know that there is a breach taking place or about to take place and telling them where the breach is taking place so they know exactly where to go to apprehend the culprits. All um, in wireless devices that have battery lives that are very long. Intrusion detection, whether intrusion detection is within a building or outside the building. Um, we have devices that can sense when there's a movement um, uh, and uh, report that um, re in real time um, so that uh, the security agencies or the security department will immediately know when, um, where there's a problem, where there's an intrusion, and be able to address the problem uh, um, uh, promptly. Um, Intrusion could intrusion detection is is is, is not it can be um, uh, identified by vibration by infrared using using infrared technology um, and can even be um, by sound. We have devices that can pick up the sounds and identify when glass is being broken, when drilling is is occurring, when there's the sound of breaking of a wall. So and, and also so basically vibration sounds and and um, movements for using infrared technology. Please go on. Once all the data has been collected, because data is is important. They say data is the new oil. Um, but data, yes, data is important. But in order for data to become valuable, you have to analyze it and turn it into actionable information. When you convert data into actionable information, then the value um, is right. And, and, and that is really what IoT is all about. Collecting the data is important, obviously. Collecting the data in a cost-efficient way is important. Collecting, it, collecting data in a way that, that causes minimum disruption to your facilities is very important. Collecting data in a way that you 
that is that um, using devices and solutions that are very easy and quick uh, and 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 um, with minimum interruption uh, can be deployed is is very very important. Now, converting that data to information is is a, is another big industry, um, and in the oil and gas sector, we have partners that when that use the data when the data is collected from the field, which is called data acquisition, that information is now transmitted and passed on to our partners who have a relationship with the oil and gas companies. And they take that data and convert it into actionable information, passing it on to the oil companies who now use that actionable information to optimize their oil operations. This saves millions of dollars. Um, when, when we look at, at the savings that Shell and other companies are reporting worldwide, we're looking at savings in billions of dollars, not millions anymore. The savings have gotten to a scale where billions of dollars are being saved using IoT, using smart solutions, using digital oil fields, using companies like IoT African Networks and TransIT. So what has been shown on the screen are various types of um, data analytics um, uh, dashboards. Um, the dashboards are customizable. Um, to suit the, they're customizable to suit the particular clients. Um, and um, uh, so please go on. Next slide, please. Because of time. So um, we have completed various projects, projects for sterling oil, projects for NPDC, projects for NGMC. Um, NPDC is Nigerian National, uh, uh, Nigerian Produ Production um, Development Company um, and the Nigerian Gas Marketing Company. Um, and we are currently in discussions with several other oil companies um, to implement this. Having said that, um, our technical partners for example, um, Oleum Tech. Oleum Tech has deployed over 400,000 devices worldwide, operating in, in extremely cold environments and extremely hot and, and difficult environments, um, in desert areas as well as in ice-capped areas. Um, so we, 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 our technical partners have a vast experience um, in deploying uh, uh, IoT smart solutions for the oil and gas industry. Um, and having come into the industry um, since 2019, um, we are also making substantial progress in this market. And we're expecting that in the year 2023, um, there will be a massive adoption of IoT because we are confident that the oil and gas industry is indeed determined to minimize cost, maximize production, minimize disruption, maximize efficiency, and obviously maximize profits. Um, and we are standing by and we are here um, to ensure um, with IoT Africa Networks Limited and Transa IT Infrastructure Services Limited, um, we, we are standing by as an indigenous organization with maximum local content um, to, uh, to work hand in hand in partnership with the oil and gas industry to ensure that the objectives for 2023 and beyond are met. Next slide, please. So that's it. Um, thank you very much. Um, my, my concluding remark would be that um, we are happy to be a part of the smart uh, industry. Um, we're happy to be part of smart oil and gas. Um, we're also, uh, when we talk about smart oil and gas, remember that within an oil and gas company, there are all types of, um, all the departments, many of the departments you find in a normal company are there. And we know that um, even outside of the oil and gas industry, IoT is required. The Internet of Things is certainly important. Smart technology Will, will obviously be required to do many things from, from smart parking to, to, to smart offices, to smart cities, um, to smart street lighting, um, to smart safety and security. Um, indeed, for example, in, 
in France, there's a law that says every home must have a smoke detector. In Nigeria, most homes don't have a smoke detector. The smart industry or the IoT industry is, 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 um, is at, its, at its infancy in Nigeria. And we look at a situation where tens of thousands of jobs can be created if smart technology is adopted in Nigeria. And this obviously will, will, will improve the bottom line of any company that adopts it and improve the safety and security in any company that adopts it and also any home and individual that adopts smart technology will benefit from its amazing capabilities and the type of solutions that it will bring to humankind and to industry and commerce. So with that, I thank you very much um, for uh, giving me your time. It's been a pleasure to deliver this presentation to you. So Michael, um, over to you, Michael. Um, perhaps uh, there might be a few questions um, which I'd be very happy to take. I can see some questions um, Is there some chat? questions on the chat? Okay, great. So the first question I can see is um, it asks, from your experience, has, the IoT, has IoT technology been embraced in other nations? Yes, indeed. Um, certainly in the oil and gas industry, um, all over the world. In um, Saudi Arabia, for example, they, they boast, and, and, they, and I've, 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 um, I've researched this, that they can account for every single liter of oil that is produced in Saudi Arabia. They have massive control centers. They collect data from all their oil and gas facilities, and they bring it all into one massive control center, and all of the data is analyzed, converted into actionable information, and obviously there's maximum accountability. So yes, in other nations, smart technology has already been adopted and is being enhanced even on a daily basis. Um, in Nigeria also, the oil and gas industry has started to embrace smart technology. However, um, it is not yet seen as a mandatory or a, and I believe it should be mandatory um, as set by the regulators because this is a very, very key national asset, oil and gas, is a key national asset. And as a key national asset, it should be well monitored and well managed. And to, to monitor well, to monitor it well, and to manage the oil and gas industry well, you cannot do that without smart technology, without companies like IoT Africa and Transa IT. Um, and like I said, as indigenous companies, we're expecting to have um, to receive a lot of support from the oil and gas industry. Can it be a potent solution in Nigeria where pipeline vandalism, oil theft, and illegal refining persists? Yes, it can. I must confess, monitoring pipelines is very difficult because they run over thousands and thousands of miles. But there are solutions that can um, achieve effective monitoring of it. Now, it's one thing to know that an oil pipe has been breached that has been broken into and product is being extracted. It's another thing to be able to respond to that. So that is another aspect which, of course, smart technology can only report and tell you that there is a problem and where the problem is, that something out of the ordinary has occurred and where it has occurred. It's then left for the organization that owns the asset to take the appropriate action. So it has to be, in order to achieve the best results, there needs to be an end-to-end -end solution involving smart technology and response teams to address the issue at the right time. In terms of um, um, oil theft, oil theft also can be measured very accurately if you know how much oil is being produced, how much oil is being stored, how much oil is being sold. If there's a difference between any of those figures, then you know that oil theft is occurring. And then it, you should easily be able to identify where it is occurring simply because the data from the 
smart systems will tell you where there's a you know where the problem is. Um, you know, um, in one of the greatest, um, I'll call it uh, um, allies of smart technology is artificial intelligence, where when the data comes, the AI systems will be able to analyze. There'll be an analysis, and there'll be the decision making, and advice will be given based um, by the AI systems, the artificial intelligence systems, leaving. You know, just the, the, in fact, to be quite frank, um, in many cases, there are control systems. Control system means data is collected, data is analyzed. Based on the data, based on what, based on the analysis, if there's an action, action needed to be taken, automatically, inform, um, action is taken by closing a valve, opening a valve, um, diverting products from one pipeline to the other pipeline system. Um, making sure that when a tank is being filled, as it's getting to the to the to the to the brim, it, um, sensors tell the system the pumps to shut down so that they don't overfill the tanks. And when they're taking pumping products out of the tanks, at the same time, when the tank is empty, you don't keep pumping, which can cause a collapse of the tank if in certain um, tank designs. Um, so. Actionable, actionable information is important, and automated systems do exist and have been adopted very, very um, uh, uh, substantially, especially in nations um, uh, other than Nigeria. But Nigeria is starting to pick up and do very well indeed. From this presentation, uh, reading from the chat, from this presentation, it is very clear again that efficiency and effectiveness do not necessarily imply or come with complexity. That is entirely correct. Um, IoT sounds complicated to people, but actually it's very simple. If I want to know the pressure, I put a pressure sensor where I want to know the pressure. That is transmitted and you get the information. It's very simple now. Um, it used to be quite complex in the past, but it has been, um, this, it's extremely simple now to install smart systems. Um, so reviving and repositioning the Nigerian oil and gas industry is not a complex or uh, or as complicated as being imagined or perceived or painted to Nigerians. Indeed, it is not. It's not complex at all. Um, once you have the good devices, good quality devices, once you have a good secure communication network, which we provide, um, and, and once you have good data analytics, which um, some uh, our partners provide, um, then, and you have good management to make sure that the information provided is acted upon, then you have a, a, an industry that's going to, to, to prosper immensely, much more than it has been doing already. Um, fixing and positively recalibrating the Nigerian oil and gas industry is clearly doable and achievable. Yes, I fully, I fully agree. Um, that is a, a, a comment made by Comrade, Comrade Zaka. Um, and um, is um, Abdul Latif um, Musa says, uh, is, the, is, is the IoT smart tech used in the agri area um, where there's a lot of leakage? Yes, in other parts of the world. Um, we, are, we are putting a lot of energy into smart agriculture. Smart agriculture um, could save Nigeria billions and billions of dollars. Smart agriculture could in, ensure that the cost of food items reduces drastically. Smart agriculture could minimize the waste. Smart agriculture could revolutionize the supply chain of the of, of in, in agriculture, where there's a lot of wastage. Many a time, farmers have produce, but nobody knows that they have the produce. Many a time, the produce is transported and transported wrongly, and because we don't, the, 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 the transporters do not know that deterioration is 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 dramatic within the, within their consignments. So there are, that's another webinar entirely, which I think we should um, we should do shortly. Um, using smart agriculture, the, the quality of life of Nigerians could improve dramatically. Um, the wastage 
of food produce in Nigeria is, is, is ridiculous. It's, it's too high. Um, and this is a major, major reason why food is very expensive in Nigeria, when it should actually be very, very cheap um, relative to other countries. So for the benefit of, of the quality of life of Nigerians, the adoption of smart agriculture is critical and urgent. This is my opinion. So Thank I've you very much. The questions that I can read on the on the chat. Thank you very much indeed for asking those questions. I hope my answers were were, were satisfactory. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Ayola. In all in all fairness, you've done great justice to this topic. It has been very eye opening. Thank you for those robust insights. You really simplified what looked like a big puzzle to most of us. I like the particular angle from which you handled the Nigerian situation. Thank you so much for your depth of knowledge. We really appreciate you. It's a privilege I've been to drink from this well of knowledge. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we don't Thank know you. if there are other questions. So please, do we still have any other question? If we don't, we have a, a video talking about uh, Tranta IT. So we'll be playing it now. And after that, we have a presentation for uh, facilitator today. Please just sit by. And basically my statement is that one of the most shameful things about Nigeria is the fact that we have today a lot of challenges in the utility sector. Fixing those two things, water and electricity supply in Nigeria will change the economy of Nigeria dramatically. It is extremely important for all the citizens and residents of Nigeria to pay their bills. Because by paying their water bills or their electricity bills, it more or less guarantees that there will be a continuation of services and our lives will be better. If you were the utility company and you knew for sure if you produce a million liters of water, you will be paid for it before it is used, would you have the necessary motivation to produce another million? Of course you would. So the motivation for the utilities companies to be to be good at what they're supposed to be good at increases dramatically once you use smart utilities. All right, thank you all. I hope we enjoyed that uh, short video. It's so powerful once again. Thank you, Mr. Larry Ayola, for all you do for Nigeria, for Africa, for humanity. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, we have some very important persons that have joined us on this program. And uh, every, of course, every participant is important. And uh, we celebrate you all and appreciate you for joining us. Uh, however, we just want to make mention of uh, Mrs. Abiola from Ibile, Oil and Gas, Lagos State. We recognize your presence. Comrade Zakar, we recognize your presence. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, once again, we come back to our facilitator. You've done so well today, sir. Thank you so much for those illuminations that you gave us. Thank you for the Thank light you you shed in these black areas. We sincerely appreciate. And so on behalf of the organizing committee of the Daily Africa Summit, we like to present a certificate of appreciation to you, a digital copy, of course. And uh, I'm going to uh, display it right away on the screen so everyone can see it. Please, just a moment, please. Thank you very much. So this is uh, the certificate that we have prepared to sincerely appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Larry Emmanuel Ayola, the chairman of the board, Smart IoT Networks Limited for this extremely amazing, inspiring presentation on smart IoT solutions for the oil and gas industry on October 7th, 2022. Once again, we want to say thank you. Please, we want all participants to kindly put your hands together.
for this icon of excellence, for this pathfinder, for this remarkable man who is championing a very transformative agenda for the African continent. Sir, we celebrate you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Michael. It's been a pleasure. I do apologize for the technical hitches at the beginning, but I'm glad we all sorted it out, and um, I, I, I hope you all enjoyed the presentation. We look forward to a great smart smart nation uh, where smart technology is adopted to make sure that um, as a country we get the best that is available. Thank you very much. All right. So once again, we thank you. We will do everything within our power to spread this message, message far and wide. It shall be made available on all our platforms, our social media platforms and every other platform that we have. Once again, we want to say thank you. And before we go, we also have another uh, very important person with us, Mrs. Nyinka Abiru. She's also here. Ma'am, we celebrate you. Thank you for finding time to join us today. So uh, if I don't know if there's a final word the our facilitator would have for us before we bring this meeting to a close. Mr. Well, Lawyer, sir. Uh, indeed. Um, once again, thank you, Michael. Thank you to... Um, to all the organizers for for um, inviting me to make this presentation. Uh, we have put in a lot of effort uh, to ensure that in Nigeria, the smart industry, the IoT industry, the industry that handles smart technology is not um, handled only by non-Nigerians, only by foreign organizations, which, which was becoming the trend prior to us entering the market. As an indigenous organization, um, we are proud that we stand tall and we stand strong in the sector that we have chosen to face, which is the smart industry sector. So we are looking forward to the adoption of smart technology in Nigeria. Indeed, um, with the assistance and with the support of the federal government, the state governments, the NNPC, um, and, and many other um, um, industry champions, um, we expect that Nigeria will benefit and prosper immensely from the adoption of smart technology. So far, the reception has been fantastic. This has been a great year for us because we've been able to talk to many sectors the oil and gas industry, the real estate industry, the agriculture industry, um, the insurance industry, and all of them have listened to what we have to offer, listened to what we have to say, um, and looked at what we have to offer, and the, the future looks very bright indeed. Certainly, we need to touch base with the chief financial officers and the chief operating officers and the chief technical officers of all, of all organizations so that they can take a good look at how smart technology can help their organizations to become more efficient, more productive, um, to minimize cost, to maximize opportunity um, for growth using smart technology. And I believe that over the next few years, we're going to see a dramatic change in the in the, in the prosperity of organizations and institutions in Nigeria um, that will indeed uh, benefit Nigeria tremendously and add substantially to the GDP of our nation. Um, we have a subsidiary called Bullseye Digital Manpower, and this was set up because we've identified that there's a massive shortage of technical manpower. And one of the reasons why people are not, companies are not adopting smart technology is because the manpower to implement the smart technology within their own organizations doesn't exist. And to hire people who already have knowledge and skills in the use of smart technology, as simple as it is, don't exist. So we have decided that our mission over the next 12 months is to train 10,000 Nigerians to become digitally skilled from software programming in all, all aspects to smart technology, to um, smart technology in the oil and gas industry, smart technology in all industries. So 
Um, ultimately, we feel that within that Nigeria will be short. We know that Nigeria will be short of three million digitally skilled people within the next three years. So, that, so when I talk about training ten thousand Nigerians, um, it is it is not going to do it. We need to start thinking about training hundreds of thousands of Nigerians in smart technology to become also digitally skilled in a broad sense. There are many different disciplines within the digitally skilled space um, in order for our country to remain a sovereign nation, able to look after its own business using its own people um, for the prosperity of the people. Otherwise, we're going to export a lot of jobs to a lot of non-Nigerian non people and it's going to be a very expensive venture for our country. So to make smart technology affordable, we have to invest in training people. To make smart technology affordable, we have to embrace it so that through volumes, we can set up the factories that will produce the smart devices in Nigeria and implement them and we would see that there's a massive opportunity. Look at the situation where there are 40 million homes in Nigeria. So if there's a law that says every home should have one smoke detector, that means we need 40 million smoke detectors. That means we need hundreds of factories to produce that. That means thousands of jobs are created. That means a massive increase in our GDP. So smart technology is one of the answers to Nigeria's prosperity. And this, I feel, is a message that um, should be transmitted broadly, widely, um, extensively, um, because we have a great opportunity in Nigeria to become um, a much richer nation utilizing smart technology. Thank you very much indeed. It's been fantastic being with you today. Wow. Honestly, words cannot suffice to thank you. Thank you for being, being a true Nigerian. Thank you for being a human being. Thank you for this crusade you have uh, chosen to embark on. And we trust that God will empower you. Thank you so much for Amen. your large heart. We are grateful. We celebrate you, sir. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, also, we want to recognize Dr. Nana K. Ofyong and several other dignitaries here, journalists, CEOs, people just too numerous to mention. We thank you all. Thank you for making this meeting one of the very best we've ever had. Thank you. It's been a wonderful time. And on behalf of the organizing committee, we want to say thank you all for joining us. To our facilitator, once again, we say thank you. We sincerely celebrate you. And we look forward to having more engagements with you. Thank you for spending time out of your very busy schedule to find to be with us. We do not take it for granted. Thank you all. We'll bring this meeting to a close. God bless you. The, the video trainings will be made available. We'll send the links far and wide. Thank you once again. Do have a wonderful day. Thank you and bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you.